Wan 2.1 has already been the best local open source video generator for a while, and now it's got an amazing motion upgrade with the release of Pusa V1. Pusa V1 is a new efficiency model that greatly improves the smoothness and dynamics of generated motion. I'll show you how to set it up in the simplest way possible, and compare some results against the previous well-known Wan 2.1 LoRa stacks. So let's get into it. Okay, let's get all the models needed for this workflow. If you've used Wan 2.1 before, then a lot of these you'll probably have already. But for anyone that's starting out, these are the files you need to get started. So first one is Wan 2.1, obviously. Um, and I'll concentrate on the I2V, so the image to video workflow. You want the 14 billion parameter one. Um, and if you have low VRAM like I do, so I have 8 gigs of VRAM, I use the 480p model and one of the quantized GIGOFs. I use the Q5 for 8 gigs of VRAM. Even though it says 12 gigs, it runs fine on, on my PC. If you're having issues, obviously you can drop down to Q4. And if you have a little bit more VRAM, you can always grab the Q6, Q8, or even some of the 720p models. Once you've gotten WAN 2.1, then you need to pick up the text encoder and VAE. So you can grab these from the Comfy UI page. Uh, the UMT5 and the WAN 2.1, just put them in the correct folders. These are pretty standard. And now we get into the LoRa's that make WAN 2.1 generation a lot better. The first one is the topic of this video, so PUSA V1. You can get it from the developer's uh, Hugging Face page. The one that you want is the PUSA V1 .safe tensors, and then you just put this into your LoRa folder in Comfy UI. The next one you want is from Kijai's Hugging Face page, and that's the newer Light x 2 v V2 LoRa that he just released. So you want to make sure you grab the right one, the ones that say V2 in there, these ones here. The one I use is the Rank 128. From testing that I've seen, it looks like 128 is a bit better than the, the old one, which was rank 32. And it doesn't give me any issues on 8 gigs of VRAM, so that's the one I stuck with. And that's it. Not too many models to download. And then we'll jump into the workflow. Okay, now that we have the files, let's go through the workflow. I've kept this WAN 2.1 workflow as simple as possible, and just adding just enough necessary parts to get it working with PUSA V1. It actually didn't take much to get it working, so it's just another LoRa. I'll go through which settings work the best in my testing, so you guys have a head start when trying on your own. Okay, starting from the left here, it's just the standard model loaders. So for WAN 2.1, because I have 8 gigs of VRAM, I am using the GIGOF. I'm using the Q5 version uh, for the 480p model. And depending on how much VRAM you have and what you've downloaded previously, you'll plug that into here. Then we have the clip loaders. Um, this one uses the scaled UMT5. That's the one I put in here. Uh, then make sure you have it on one and then device CPU if you can. And then the VAE that you've downloaded as well. It's pretty standard stuff here. Second block is for the speed up. Uh, same as most of the other videos that I've had. There's been some feedback on Sage Attention. I think it is worth just trying to get it working. I think without it, people have seen some quality drops. So I think just check a couple other tutorials, get Sage Attention working. Then you can use these two nodes. Uh, and that'll help out with the overall generation. The Sage Attention and then the Patch Torch settings, both of those are turned on. And then we get to the LoRa stack. So what I'm showing you here is the original one 2.1 LoRa stack that I've been using. It's based largely off the Fusion X fine tune. So you see the Light X 2V for the speed up, and then the Excel vid for the other speed up, and then the MPS for prompt adherence. So these three were pretty standard. Um, across most WAN 2.1 generations because they offer these two offer the speed up and then MPS help with the prompt adherence so you can do quick generations that pretty much follow what you're typing. Now with PUSA actually what I've done is I don't need the Excel vid and I don't need the MPS and I just need PUSA. So after you downloaded PUSA V1 put it in the model loader you still need Light X2V. That's the best speed up lower that's out there. PUSA will give you better motion details and prompt adherence, so you don't need the other two anymore. And that's the best way that I've been using it right now. So with the PUSA V1 LoRa loaded in, uh, one thing you can adjust is the strength of the model. By default, I think it comes with 1.4. Um, I found that sometimes 1.4 was too much and it caused some issues with the video generations itself. Uh, so I've always lowered it to 1.2. That seems to be the sweet spot for me when I was testing generations. There's good enough prompt adherence, good subtlety on the motion without creating artifacts in the overall video. You can also lower it to 1. So I think between 1 to 1.4, um, those values are probably safe to use. 
then we move on to the prompts so i put the negative on top here just so it feeds into the one video nag um, a little bit clearer the positive prompt on the bottom which is where you want to put the prompt itself that's also close to the load image so you can change these a little bit quicker since these are the ones that you'll touch the most so general prompts that the one usually takes so i keep it pretty simple if you want more camera motion there's also gpt enhanced uh, prompts that you can create and they'll go through um, different camera motions if you want those to be added those work quite well as well so from here the negative prompt goes into the one video neg leave these settings as default and then that model continues on to the model sampling sd3 which is the shift value this setting actually has a big change on how the end result looks having it on shift one you get a lot of ghosting from from what i was getting on the tests and then two or three seem to be fine there seems to be some guidance that your shifts should be half of your steps so it'd be three in that case but between two and three, I don't see too much difference. So I left it at two because that's what I had it as before. Then before I get to the one image to video, let me just shift down to the image loader section. Only three nodes here. Load image. You choose the, the picture that you want. I have a resize node here as well. So that will take your image, uh, resize it to be divisible by 16. I've set it to 480 by 480 just for uh, test generations because I'm using the one 480p model. You can obviously take a, a landscape 16 by 9. That would be 848 by 480 for a, for a widescreen one, uh, or the opposite, 480 by 848 for a portrait. Increasing the resolution obviously will increase the time of your video generation. But since I'm working with a square here, I turn it into a square. 480 by 480 is the image that I'll use that actually gets fed into the one image to video. So the positive, so the negative prompt goes in the negative, positive goes to the positive. The VAE gets connected here, and then that resized image gets plugged into the start image it also takes the width and height from the resize image that way you only have to change it once and then it gets fed into the one image to video node as well number of frames uh, is the length so 81 is about five seconds one does a generation 16 frames per second and then all of that gets fed into the k sampler so the positive goes in the positive prompt negative to negative then the latent that it creates gets passed in the latent image uh, and then the shift the model with the shift also gets fed in here as well so a couple of steps in the case sampler it's pretty simple seed obviously you can change it to randomize or fix then we have steps which is one of the biggest differences four is the absolute minimum so with light x2v you can do four steps but i found that the quality wasn't as great with pusa turned on um, and maybe with the new light x2v model so I've increased it to six and six is pretty good. Video quality is obviously still a little bit low because the resolution is low, but at least most of the subject and everything else stays intact with six steps. And then we have CFG, which is one. Uh, I think because you have light 2XV loaded, you have to use one. The sampler I use is Euler, scheduler simple, and then denoise at one. For the sampler, there's a specialized sampler called Flow Match Pusa on the one uh, video wrapper node. But that one I couldn't get working, um, especially with 8 gigs of VRAM. For some reason, that workflow uh, kept crashing my computer. So I've stuck with the normal one with Euler. And even in my comparison test using Euler, there is a noticeable difference using uh, PUSA versus the old LoRa stack. So I think it's still taking effect. It's still you know using the LoRa and it's still optimizing it. So I think it should be fine to use Euler. Then all of that gets fed into the VAE decode which outputs your images and gets turned into a video. So 16 frames by default. So obviously if you like the output, you can run it through more enhancements to get it to 30 frames uh, and also to upscale the video itself. So here we have a sample output. My input was just this woman holding a gun. The prompt was the woman aims her pistol and shoots three shots, muzzle flashes on each shot. And the output uh, is pretty good. So she aims, starts firing, way more than three shots but the motion with pusa turned on is is quite good and i'll have some comparisons against the old stack and new stacks afterwards but here you can see little tiny more subtle movements in here there's also like background lighting that goes on uh and then twinkling lights for the for the cars and things like that so little things like that it's pretty good there's also a subtle kind of handheld movement with the camera where it sways a little bit to the left um, so overall, it's, it's actually a pretty good generation. 
Okay, let's take a look at the generations and compare it against some of the old LoRa stacks. All the comparisons will have the Excelvid, MPS, and Lite X2V on the left, and Pusa V1 on the right. What you'll notice for all of the videos is that the old LoRa stack is a little bit more wooden. There's just less subtle little movements that make uh, the Pusa V1 one a little bit more realistic. So here you can see she's aiming the gun and then barely moves after that. Uh, the background also doesn't have much movement in the lights. Whereas on the Puso one, it's just a little bit more natural in the way she's moving. And then the camera movement's more natural, uh, plus all the, the background lights that are moving as well. Then for the next one, the prompt is just uh, the man and the woman are in a desert and the man starts drinking a Coke. Um, so for this one, you'll also see little subtle movements. In this one, his arm goes up, body movement not much, uh, and the woman isn't really moving much either. Whereas in the Pusa model, he, he does little like head movements and then he raises it, takes a look at the bottle and then drinks from it. The woman also has some slight movement uh, on her face and just body motions as well. It's just a little bit more natural in how a person would stand. Then we have a quick comparison on a drawing or anime style shot. Uh, this one is the woman is seated and she reaches over and checks her notes. On the old stack, she kind of reaches for the lamp, then puts the, the note away. Um, but whereas the Pusa one, she does like a small hesitation with her hand and then checks to see where the note is and takes it. Those little things, again, make it just a little bit more realistic, a little bit more dynamic. And then for the last one, just a couple of generations themselves. Uh, these ones are both using Pusa. This one was just a straight image to video of a, with the prompt as the man was playing a violin on a busy street. Um, so you'll see, again, little subtle movements with his head uh, as he's playing. And again, his fingers are moving quite dynamically as well. Um, and the way his, his arm is moving up and down is not very static. So it's not like just straight up and down. Um, and his body as well. So everything is just, there's just little subtle movements inside. And then same with the skateboarder. You'll notice halfway through, she kind of shifts her weight a little bit and then uh, keeps the momentum going. So these are not really there on the old stack where she would just be kind of gliding along and the background's moving. Um, you might get the, the wind in her hair and things like that, but it's the, you know, the little balance moves that she makes that, that would be gone from the old one. So that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully this helps you set up a PUSA and start making generations on 1.2.1. If you found it helpful, give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I'll catch you in the next one.